Hello, I'm Brian Atkinson and welcome once again to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video, we shall cover the air bomber's position within the Avro Lancaster bomber. We shall be referring to the 1944 Air Ministry manuals. I hope you find this interesting. The nose of the Lancaster's fuselage extends forwards from the cockpit instrument panel. The lower part of the nose is dome shaped and made from transparent material but includes a flat portion of glass in the lower half of the dome for direct vision to assist the air bomber. A hydraulically operated Fraser Nash FN5 gun turret is mounted above the air bomber station and for further information on the turret see our video covering the FN5 nose gun turret. The air bomber station with associated equipment occupies the floor of the nose. The air bomber is provided with kneeling cushions located on the door in the nose and an adjustable support. The prone position enables the front gun turret to be used while the air bomber is at his station. In front of the support provision is made for mounting a Mark II automatic bomb sight or in aircraft incorporating modification number 468, a Mark 14 bombsite is fitted, as shown here. The computer for the Mark 14 bombsite is mounted on the port side of the nose. And above the computer is the cock controlling the air supply from the automatic control system. Here's the bombsite gyro unit sighting head Mark 14 and to its left is the bombsite auto steering unit Mark 4. The unit enables the air bomber to adjust the aircraft's flight path during the bomb run to obtain the best possible sighting solution through the sighting head prior to releasing the bomb load. Mounted on the port side is the bombsite switch box it provides electrical current for the bombsite's gratical lamp and for a lamp that illuminates the drift scale on the course setting indicator. The drift scale lamp is controlled by a dimmer switch in the top left hand corner and the gratical lamp is controlled by a rheostat and tumbler switch mounted on the right hand side. We shall be covering the bombsite Mark 14 in much more detail in a future video. When the TR1196 transmitter receiver installation is fitted, the air bomber's press to transit switch is located on the port side at the forward end of the nose. A target map case is provided on the floor below the air bomber's support. On the starboard side of the nose is the air bomber's panel. Fitted on the panel are the following. A 16 point Connell bomb preselector switch panel. The 16 switches refer to a possible 16 bomb stowage points. However, the Lancaster has 15 bomb stowage points fitted in its 33 foot long bomb bay. The air bomber uses this switch panel to select which bombs were released over the target. This enabled bombs to be retained for a second attack. The master jettison pull safety handle can be seen to the right of the panel. The pilot also has access to a bomb jettison switch type H and a jettison pull handle that is mounted on the starboard side of the instrument panel. The stick bombing timing device shown here is used to set the time delay between the release of each bomb and the round dial below is the bomb interval trimming dial. Here we have the bomb dropping selector box. Its purpose is to ensure the bombs were dropped in the right order to retain the correct trim for the aircraft during flight. This is the bomb firing switch. Here it is safely stowed in its holder. Just above the panel is the on-off switch controlling the heating of the 4,000 pound bomb release gear. It controls the heating of the centre bomb gear housing 
in the intermediate centre portion of the fuselage. To the top right of the air bomber's panel is the panel lamp and switch. The lamp is fitted with a coloured filter to assist with dimming. A stowage for the air bomber's height and speed computer is also provided in the starboard panel. Below the starboard panel is the mounting for the F24 camera control switch and to its right the photo flare firing switch. The F24 camera is fitted with a heating muff and is installed on an adjustable framework on the rear port side of the nose above a circular window directly under the camera lens as shown here. A hinged inspection door for the bomb compartment is formed in the bulkhead at the rear of the nose and a socket is provided for connecting an inspection lamp. A flexible oxygen connection for the air bomber is fitted on the port side and an ivory writing pad and pencil on the front former. Glycol de-icing for the air bomber's window is operated by a hand pump on the port side of the fuselage nose. If the pump is operated once a minute, it delivers fluid at the rate of two pints per hour. The reservoir unit shown here also supplies glycol for the pilot's windscreen and is of approximately four gallons capacity and is fitted below the step at the rear of the nose. Mounted on the port side of the nose are the aileron gyro and to its right the larger rudder and elevator gyro. This diagram illustrates the required piping and items of equipment needed for the Lancaster's automatic pilot system, affectionately known as George. To the rear of the air bomber's position is the forward bulkhead forming the front face of the bomb bay. Mounted on this is the air bomber's parachute stowage and to its left the black cylindrical air dryer for the automatic controls. In the floor of the air bomber station is the main emergency parachute exit door. Painted yellow to aid visibility at night, a handrail is fitted on the starboard side of the nose beside the step leading down into the nose area to assist crews as they attempted to make their way to the nose parachute exit. Well that's it for this video. I'll be posting a special video covering just the bombsite Mark 14 in much greater detail soon. If you like what I do on this channel, please click the like button and consider subscribing. And also click the bell. Remember it's free and you'll receive notifications when my future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.